I think we're ready. You guys are ready? Yeah. All right. Although, why am I hearing an echo? Oh, why is it on reset? Oh, come on. Don't worry about it. Well, five seconds behind. Uh, echo, echo. All right. So, this is Braid. <laughs> um, the guy that I'm playing as, his name is Tim, and he's uh, searching out this princess. Otherwise, uh, this first world's not uh, very exciting. Um, I guess one thing I could bring up is that the game does technically have two control schemes, uh, and I'm playing on the PC version. It's uh, you can use either you can use the arrow keys or WASD for movement. Um, I'm using the arrow keys, and as far as jumping goes, you can either use the space bar or the Z key, and I'm using the Z key. Primary reason for this is because of the fact that the main mechanic of the game is not only it being a platformer but also time manipulation. If you use the shift key, that allows you to reverse time. Oh, like that, because I did not want to jump on that, actually. Because I need the extra height to jump on that. So, the, since the shift key is right next to the Z key, I just use the Z key instead of the space bar to jump. But the primary thing is I have to go through five worlds collecting all these puzzle pieces to get to the last world. And yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, now these two puzzle pieces, I'm skipping them right now because I can't actually get them yet. And I'm also skipping this one right now because I can't get it yet. Well, actually, I could get this one, but... This puzzle piece that I'm just, I just passed up, I'm going to grab that one right now, and I'm going to go back and grab the previous one. Because I need both those puzzle pieces to uh, actually get the next uh, two, puzzle pie the two puzzle pieces I passed up. Whoops. Okay, I needed to jump on that guy. And not run into things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is one of those games that uh, if you miss a jump or something like that, it's a little, a little bit unforgiving. Also, there's no game over screen. You just yeah, there's no game there. over. As yeah. soon as you have uh, to rewind as... until you're back. Yeah, basically, if I die, it's not an actual death. I just rewind time and I'm back to whatever. Yeah. So I assume that he's hiding the dagger of time under his coat. <laughs> he might be. But yes, I have to move these two particular puzzle pieces right in this configuration so that way. Oops. So that way I can be on top of them. Then I can use this one here. To manipulate that guy, so now he is actually falling as well. Oops. Oh, yeah. And yes, we know about the echo. Uh, I just, I, I, I was missing my uh, Z key there apparently. But yeah, I need that guy to fall down here so that way I can jump on him and get that piece. Do we know what's causing the echo? Or? What's that? Oh. Do we know what's causing the echo? I think I do. If um... I'm not hearing an echo anymore, but I was hearing an echo earlier. Well, yeah, we could hear on the TV, but I don't know. But... It's not, ah. there's no sound coming out of the TV. Oh. You're probably hearing it right from here. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is kind of tricky to time, is I gotta get this time just right so that way I land on top of this guy. And the timing's just a little bit exact. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just like that. What are the major themes of this game's collectibles the possession? It Is that echo from this sense. though, or whoops? Uh, it deliberately know. forces you to, to get the same, to do the same thing over and over again repetitively in order to get collected. Let me know when you complete this chapter. And that's okay, actually well I'm about to complete it after this uh, area right here. Um, basically the capture program is pretty late, so... Alright, <laughs> so um, so right. well that's all of World 2 right there. Alright, uh, let me just solve the puzzle first and then okay. we can... Yeah, these puzzles are a little, uh, yeah. tricky. So when we said this was a puzzle game, this is actually what we meant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, you have to solve puzzles to complete the, uh, objectives. Uh, okay. Sometimes I forget where some of these puzzle pieces are supposed to go. And sometimes they don't want to click into place, either. Alright, um, should I pause the game, or what? Um, we're gonna actually fix the uh, echo we're hearing on our end here for a moment, so just bear with us for a moment. 
Oh. Done. Okay. okay. Well, that was an easy fix. All right. Good. All right. Can you tell me when it's a good time? Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me when it's a good time to read the Um, yeah, like, give me a sec. I'll explain something really quick to the uh, stream here. Um, so the starting in World 3 and going to the rest of the worlds, so, um, it has this uh, thing. You can kind of see it around the door and the key is that they're glowing. What that means is that those particular objects are unaffected by Tim's time manipulation. So things like that door stay in place while uh, I'm reversing time. And it's also um, a big thing in this room is that those clouds are still moving even though I stopped time for a moment there. So that's basically in the rest of this world here. That's going to be like that. That's, that's another great thing about this game. It's all designed. It does a great job of teaching you its basic mechanics. Uh, through the actual level design and uses like very minimalistic tutorial prompts, if any. Yeah. Just like stuff like WASD, spacebar, Z, shift. Yeah, yeah. Um, it. But I don't think I really have much to say for a little bit, so if you want to do donations, go ahead. Okay. We have a $15 donation from Jeremy Fry. Put this towards the 100% completion of the. We have a $30 donation from Stephen Long. I absolutely love this event so far. Keep up the good work, boys. I'd like to put this towards Cosmos any percent Ocarina of Time run. Thank you, Steven. Alright, really quick for this uh, little, uh, to get this puzzle piece. I have to move this way and then, I have to walk back because of the fact that I need to rewind time to get this puzzle piece. Uh, one kind of funny thing here is that I rewind time and I jump off of it there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and actually this one, um, the Xbox 360 version, there's a, um, there's a glitch with ladders that you can actually jump off the top of a ladder. I've been told you can do it in the PC version, but I found out about it a little late, and uh, I don't know how to pull it off. So I'm going to be doing this kind of the intended way. So we'll see that here. Oops. That's not the intended way. Um, actually, hold on. Yeah. Uh, whoops. Okay. See, so, um... I'm hitting the wrong, wrong keys here. <laughs> But yeah, I have to basically manipulate this guy so he doesn't get killed. So he's right here. Oh. That's not how it's done. Yeah. But yeah, um... Here we go. So yeah, that's the only way I can get that puzzle pieces like that. Um... Yeah, if you want to read some more donations here, then. We have a $5 donation from Mina Mew. All of us at Mega Band wish you luck, Cyberbotics, and Kieran demands someone defend straight Cyberbotics. Have fun. Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Now this one, I have to also manipulate this a little bit here. Kind of close, not quite. <laughs> yeah, and I'm about to like get killed as I'm doing this. So yeah, this is there. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have, to, I have to make it so that way that one that's moving at an angle hits the one that's moving to the left, so that way I can actually get through this safely. Otherwise, it, there's not enough time to run through there. This is officially turned from a speed run into a YouTube move. I did not want to be in that platform after I made that jump. So. Um, this particular level, I have to do this next little section down here, like, not perfectly, but I can't rewind too much, otherwise I can't get that puzzle piece that's back to the uh, left over there. But I'm also going to be playing this a little safe here, I could try to do it a little faster, but I might die in the process, and that will possibly kill this level, so... <laughs> Basically, the, uh, the, the, the green filter keys are the are to yeah, include yeah, trial and error in a game of time and yeah, Okay, that has never happened before. Uh, wow. Yeah, that really has never happened to me before. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah, there's um, a natural echo. Yeah. So it's meant to echo. I yeah, we're just kind of I've beaten this game and I never noticed the echo. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody's trying to pick apart my audio, that's what it is. <laughs> oh no, I think it would be something else playing on my computer.
was definitely there from before. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was. And I just hope that these guys don't troll me over here too much. This entire game actually takes place in a huge cave. Why is that going? Yeah, so I have to rewind time after grabbing that key. Now, there is a way to quick kill this boss. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to pull it off. I'll probably get close. Like, yeah, I got three of the hits. I, it is technically possible to do all five hits at once. I, at least that's what the SDA run does. Um, and I, I just have not been able to pull that off. I can get close. Like, that, that's probably as good as it can get, otherwise. Yeah, but th that's probably one of the only rooms in the game that has no puzzle pieces in it. Every other room in the game actually has at least one puzzle piece. Really, the echo just adds to the whole trippiness of the game. Okay, what's going on there? Not really trippiness. All right, because of that, I may not be able to actually uh, do this all that quickly. So this guy over here might not be at the ladder by the time I get down it, and I might have to wait for that. Yeah. And uh, I thought I could pull that off getting on top of that before it went above me there. He's not getting the puzzle pieces, it's tedious. He's yeah, yeah. The here's stars. the thing that puzzle piece, it looks like, oh, I can't get that because it's behind a uh, closed door. Um, one other thing about the whole. Uh, glowing thing about the um, platforms not uh, being affected by time. If I stand on one, I'm unaffected by time. So I'm able to do this. Rewind time back to the beginning of the level. And then that door is now open again. So I can actually go and get that puzzle piece that looks like I couldn't have got it before. But with that, that will be the end of World 3, so if you want to read up some donations for a little bit. We have a $5 donation from Christopher Crawford. Oh wow, I hate this. Any man says that a lot. We have a $5 donation from Thorsten Dollar. Okay. Uh, I hope my previous donation arrived. I guess I used more than 255 characters, so all my message probably all of my message probably didn't. A shout out to my brother and to Bluegrass. Also, Raid Rocks. Thank you. Actually, I am hearing an echo. That, that echo's not supposed to be there. Alright, um, World 4 has a, uh, its own unique, an extra unique mechanic. Moving to the left, to the right, makes time move forwards, but moving to the left makes time move backwards. <laughs> so there's a little bit of an interestingness to that. <laughs> interesting. It's World 5 is double counters, right? Yeah. So World 6 is the There we go. Yeah. So I have to jump up here to grab this puzzle piece. I have never seen this level design before. Yeah, I know. It, it totally looks nothing like uh, an existing game, right? I mean, not even the world named Jumpman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to do. I have to get that puzzle piece from the left because if I get it from the right, um, the door does not open because time is not moving forwards. <laughs> So not, I take it not all puzzle pieces are green filtered. Not all of them are green, no. Um, most of them in this world are, but there are a few that are not. And now I gotta, I gotta make that thing be alive to grab this key, and then come back this way. And then kill it, grab the key, and then get back up here. And there we go. Now a rehash of the an existing level from this, this game. Yeah, actually, yeah, I want to actually be over here. It's much less of a rehash with this mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. This one I have to time it pretty well because I need I need the double jump. But the only way to get the double jump is to have be moving to the to the left, so time's not moving forwards. Jump on the guy, then be moving to the right, so time is actually moving forwards to. And you like, have to kill them from left to right. Yeah. Basically, I have to kill the enemies in a very certain order in this particular 
version of the hunt. I'm pretty sure this is where I gave up on my initial playthrough, but I, I did end up being like that. Yeah. This this guy can be like the worst part of this particular room. Yeah, see the door is glowing, so even though this guy's alive again, it, the door stays open. Okay, now this guy has to be alive at least for a little bit. And I actually do need a, a tiny bit of serious time. I need to hear the key being grabbed. So no, it, yeah, he grabbed it. Unfortunately, it's on top of the plant, so I gotta wait a little bit. Well, thankfully, with this setup, you'll be able to hear the key being grabbed multiple times. <laughs> yeah, and I have to be careful with this guy, because he could still kill me, even though he's burrowing again. He's actually upgraded Zergling. Okay. There is a lot of echo. A lot of echo, you say. Whoops. Alright. Yeah, and this, I have to ma make this guy actually come over here so I can jump in and get that. So the game does make some very good usage of its own mechanics to uh, do this. It does a really, it does really good job with the time. Yeah, I do have to hear this key being grabbed as well, though. He ended up a little bit farther away than I expected. Sometimes I don't really want to rewind too much there because if I do, then I sometimes go a little too far back. And then you have things like this. This cloud's moving uh, just in a way that I move extremely slowly while I'm on the cloud. And this, I find, is probably the worst level of this world, because the key is not glowing. So you'll see what happens with that, because of that here. Yeah, I just have to wait for this to respawn, and then, uh, the key actually follows the path that I last took. So it, that's why it ended up on the top level there, even though I was on the bottom. Now this next part could potentially troll me. But what, ha what has to happen is the key has to be grabbed by by that, and then I have to go through the door. The door, it's kind of tricky how it has to be opened in order for me to grab the puzzle piece. But now I can just rewind and come back this way. And that is the end of World 4. The funny thing about World 4 is that to, to actually end it, once I go through the flag, I have to still keep moving to the right because time will stop otherwise. <laughs> But um, one other thing I should bring up is that the actual in-game timer, which doesn't matter for this, um, stops during this little point and any time I'm solving the puzzles. We're dying, so I don't need them. So, we have a $5 donation from Thomas Astolfi. <clears throat> I appreciate what you guys are doing. When I was younger, my brother was diagnosed with leukemia. Through medical help and chemotherapy, he was able to get better and is now living a happy, healthy life. I know it is not much, but I felt I needed to give something. Put this to whatever you guys want, and keep up the good work. Thanks, Thomas. We have a $50 donation from Sarah Kelly. Good luck to Cyberbotics in his braid run. Let him decide where, what this money goes to, from Glitterin and Asherax. Uh, that's a diehard. Does the game still have that sprite glitch with the double goggers? Does it still have what? The sprite glitch with the double goggers. For sometimes the sprite would glitch out. I'm and not sure. I don't. I had that all the time in a this game. Um, but yeah, but um, World Five, it's uh, it's made its unique mechanic is this uh, whole thing with shadows. Is that uh, uh, let me make this jump first? Is that um. Basically, when I rewind time, there's a shadow of me that repeats whatever actions I did prior to me rewinding time. So that's actually needed for things like this, to get some of these puzzle pieces. Other than that, it's not as exciting as the last world, I think. Uh, if you want to read some more donations, go ahead. We have a $5 donation from Tiffany Bong. Here's $5 towards the grab bag. Thanks, SDA, for doing this for a great cause. 
and thanks for doing a Braid speedrun. It's one of my favorite games. Okay, that was bad. So this run is quickly turning into in the company and myself. <laughs> Uh, this one's a bit of a tricky one. There's actually, it requires very careful manipulation to get all three puzzle pieces because of the way the shadows work in the game. So the first thing I have to do is make sure that the, that one gets killed. Then I have to jump on that one. And that basically has to be that that platform has to be to the left, but there's still has to be the shadow one for this guy to get over here so I can jump on him. Um, this is another instance where the Xbox version actually does do it a little faster because of the ladder glitch. Because they don't need to worry about that um, the second puzzle piece with the uh, guy being over there like that. God, I almost did not grab the head actually. This is also another um, instance of like careful manipulation of the shadow, is that um, I have to be on top of this door, but the, the door can be opened by shadow, so it needs to open it so I can actually continue, but I can't have it open it too early. So the, sh the shadow does have its own little unique uh, things it has that need to be done. Just a little too early. In case you notice, with the shadow there, you had to press up at the right time while you were making the path to the shadow. Uh, basically, you needed to time those two switches together. Yeah. See, I'm helpful. <laughs> yeah. Basically, if I don't, if I, if I don't hit up at the right time and the shadow's not there at the correct moment, it doesn't make that platform move up. This would be the other of the, the two layer levels in this game. The game likes to use that pit map to sort of introduce new mechanics. <laughs> yeah. Now this particular one doesn't have, uh, it's, it is affected by time, but it's also, uh, that's not how it has to be done, but the, it's also affected by shadows, so. so basically I just have the shadow hit at the, of course, so, it, of course it misses at that time. So this guy does regen his health if you move backwards. Yes. So I want to actually time things right so that way the shadow hits it instead. And I think it is actually possible to do it a slight bit faster than the... Uh... Oh, that's not normal. Yeah, sometimes the timing is a little tricky on that. And that might have been too late. Now I don't really have to worry about the shadows. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess I do have to worry about the shadows now. Those fireballs. Yeah. The fireballs are trolling me right now. Okay. Huh. Alright, well I only have two more hits on him, so I'm just gonna I guess, wait for him to come back the right way. Oh, huh. that actually kind of worked out. That he took two hits at once, so I guess I'll take that. But this is yes, yet yeah, another instant where the uh, shadow needs to be uh, used. I also have to make sure that's timed properly because of uh, this door right here. It'll go up and then immediately come down once it's at its top. So I have to make sure that it gets opened and then get the door almost instantly. Give me the key. Now, something that I have to do here is that the key actually is glowing. If I had opened the first door myself, the key would have been broken. I would not have been able to open the second door. 
So I shadow. forced the shadow to open it for me. Level design. All right, got another like little bit if you want to read more donations. We have a $100 donation from Philip Benner. <clears throat> good event for a good cause. Kudos. Thanks. And we have a $13.37 donation from Robin Thapper. Raid is wonderful. One of the best alongside Cave Story. Let Blue, let blue Glass choose where this donation and if possible yesterday's <laughs> $13.37 goes towards. Alright. Now, the, this world here, World 6, has the, me its mechanic is, uh, it, basically Tim has this ring yes. you put it down, and, um, the game is no longer a speedrun, technically, because, <laughs> uh, the ring slows things down in the, a um, area where it is. So, this level might look a tad bit familiar, at least somewhat. Wow, that guy is really after me. Yeah. I'm so tempted to make the obligatory joke about the ring. But I'm a better man. But yeah. But that's basically what I have to do in there is that if I didn't put the ring down, that door would have closed too early. No. Ugh. Uh, jumps, how do they work? But this is another one where I have to kind of time things correctly here. I think I need the ring to be down just a tad bit more than I had it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I, I don't know if I have enough. I don't know if I have enough room to do it. Oh, uh, just barely. Yeah, I saw you make it onto the can the last time. Come on. Work with me, guys. Yeah, and that's. I mean, basically, it, the the slowing down is like a huge mechanic within this uh, particular world. It just it kind of sucks that I'm doing a speed run and I have to slow things down to. It's a good thing you the have the ring at the start of every map. You don't need to again. Yeah, actually, that's the thing. The ring, it actually, uh, yeah, it, it comes back uh, after you've. And I think that was kind of badly timed there. But the the ring, when it's uh, when you leave a uh, room, the ring kind of resp it doesn't respawn technically. It's just that it kind of despawns, I guess, in a way. Get it back. Yeah, you get it back basically, which actually is going to be helpful on this particular uh, level. Uh, I'll uh, show them a little bit here. A lot of the levels of this game, a lot of the harder levels of this game, are really easy to just finish, but they're very hard to get the puzzle, the puzzle pieces for. Yeah, and this this ledge is just not working out for me either. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because I have to be up here to grab the key over there. Now I just have to wait for another one of those guys to respawn. Then there's one more piece. So the ring even slows down the slow the rewind? Uh, yeah, actually it does. Yes. Because basically the, re the, the rewind kind of works exactly how everything worked when you before you rewound. So even if things were slowed down, then the, the stuff that was re within the rings area is also rewound slowly. Now, if you don't do this part right, it's easy to get stuck in this. It is, yes. Now, the whole thing with the ring being despawned when I enter and leave a room <laughs> helps here because now I don't have to worry about the ring being on top of that cannon anymore. If I had left the ring on the cannon, I would have been slowed down going through that area. Uh, this room, I'm actually going to play it a little bit safe and leave the ring down for probably about a second or two longer than, I, than what normally need to be done. Because if I don't, then that upper platform might actually get stuck. And then I would have to redo this room. Which is another instance of that, uh, of basically being one of those things where if you... The game being unforgiving, basically. Now, the SDA run actually does this a little differently. And I can't pull off the way they do it. Um, this is probably the intended way of doing it. But you basically need two of these guys here because the jump is just too high to do with only one of them. 
There, there are a lot of instances of this in this game where there are basically rooms that have been kind of redone, but with the different mechanic being used in it instead. Oh yeah, that's another thing. The, the music is actually affected by the ring. So, it, like back in World 4, when I was moving to the uh, left, the music was actually going backwards as I was moving to the left. Um, and in this world, uh, actually, hold on. I actually want the extra height there. But in this world, the ring, the music slows down whenever I'm in, in, within the vicinity of the ring's uh, slowdown effect. And it also goes backwards in, uh, in the room where you move left and right. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Oh, right, sorry. Yeah. Um, this one, after I get the uh, key, there might be... I might have to wait and I might not. It all depends on the timing of things. Um, it is very possible that there, I could get through it without having to wait, except for the bottom of those three cannons. That one I always have to wait for. Um, but it's very possible that I may have to wait for... Oh, actually, that was helpful there. Oh, that was not. Okay, let me just get this guy over here. Um, because um, I, basically the only way I can get back is I have to use the ring. Because otherwise those cans are just going too fast for me to go back through them. Yeah, the, plat the platform is being bringing the ring back down, so... I have to wonder how they would, how they were able to do this with a non-mini file. Like, how would they, what kind of codec would they have to use to be able to dynamically change the speed? Um, all the music files in the game are, uh, AUGs. So. Okay, that I have actually seen happen before. It doesn't usually happen that way. Usually, um, actually, gotta figure out how I'm gonna kill this guy. Because he's in my way now. Eh. No, it is not. It's, pro it's probably the rabbit from Monty Python. Yes, yes. That's the um, but yeah, usually if the rabbit's there, it actually gets crushed usually and then killed. Um, very few instances like that where it happens, where it actually gets pushed through that little gap. So, it's not the first time it's ever happened to me, but it doesn't happen often. Yeah, the ring has to be down there to slow down the cannon. Alright, gotta do this right. Basically, I need to use the fact that I was unaffected by time to be able to grab that particular puzzle piece. Actually. Yeah, I just, I just need to slow this platform down enough for that to happen. And what happened just there was like kind of an edge clip. Um, that actually might be a little useful later. Oh. And this is kind of a little tricky, is I gotta actually grab the ladder as it's uh, as it's falling, but I need to be unaffected by time at the same time to grab this one. So it took me a couple tries there, but got it. Hold it up. That one, the reason I put the ring down there, you'll actually see why in a second here. Now if you if you notice, right next to the switch, there's that little glowing effect. Yeah, it's a platform I can stand on, and time's unaffected. I'm actually going to try playing a little safe here. But yeah, so now the ring is actually over there. Which is needed to grab the key, because it's falling into a pit. So yes, even the key is affected by that. And I, the, I have to basically place the ring as the cannonballs um, showing up, otherwise I can't get through that little uh, ladder area. Uh, okay. There you go. It did not want to let me out. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for World Six. Um, now it may seem odd that I started off on World Two of all things. Yeah, we're, we did worlds two through six, and now we're about to do world one. So, as far as music, uh, like changing with speeds and stuff, but that's probably from what I'm hearing. It sounds like all they're doing is just uh, slowing down the entire playback, so it doesn't cause any effects with it because it, it'll actually sound deeper. And that's 
And that's like an effect of it slowing down using that method. Yeah. What, one of the reasons that uh, companies like Nintendo were so reluctant to do uh, orchestrated music is because it's a lot harder uh, to dynamically change uh, uh, algorithm v3 files on the fly, like adding things or, or extra tracks, whereas it's pretty much effortless on MIDI. Yeah. So World 1, its big thing is that the entirety of the world is going in reverse. Except for Tim. So I kind of got to time this a little bit good here. So I get up there. Now, um, this one, I basically, the, I use basically in the background, there's those things that look kind of like weird looking clouds. I use that as my uh, key to figure out where I'm supposed to stand to allow this to happen. Um, it's almost like I've actually affected what happened in reverse because that's actually what happened is that everything is moving in reverse, but I'm actually affecting how it went in reverse. Because normally if those guys don't get killed, or don't get hit by me like that, they uh, appear out of that uh, top cannon instead of the one on the left, instead of the one on the right. Oh, no, actually, hold on. Yeah, because it's not changing the speed, it's really easy to play backwards. So. Who, who was it who composed the... Uh... No, Jonathan Blow did not do the music. He actually, I think, purchased the rights to uh, music from existing uh, albums. Uh. Uh. Yeah, this is a probably if you would like use programs like SoundHound and stuff to try to identify music. It usually doesn't work on video game music. It works on all the music in this game. <laughs> now, um, there is technically a. Uh, actually, I'm not making that jump for some reason. Uh, the, what is he doing? The game is not being yeah, forgiving. He's playing a blast semester too. I guess he is. Um, there is technically a uh, my, there is a skip for this particular level. I probably will not be able to pull it off. I every time I tried practicing it, I could not pull it off. It requires very very precise timing because um, uh, there are basically certain things you have to do, like um, things like that edge clip I talked about earlier. You have to do some of those very precisely to be able to uh, get the um, get the skip. Like, there's one right there that I just couldn't pull off, and I'm just not even gonna bother trying it. It'll take too many tries, and I'll just waste time otherwise. But um, I did mention that this world is going in reverse, so you probably should keep that in mind as this uh, level's going on. Yeah, and one, one of the things about the uh, the skip this level has is um, I would have probably been able to get through that area a little bit faster also if I had actually made some of the jumps properly. Uh, what it is is that um, if you see to the uh, right there, there's that chandelier, and the princess is about to go down and the chandelier is being reformed. The skip involves getting to this point in the, gate, in the, the level prior to the chandelier reforming and then jumping on the chandelier. Um, so yeah, now I have to hold down the shift key for about like two minutes. So if you want to read donations, that probably, this would probably be an excellent time for that. We have a $5 donation from Nicholas Ottenheim. <laughs> this is for extra bosses in Dark Souls. If all goals have been met, it's for OT any percent. But keep up the good work. I'm assuming that's Ocarina of Time. <clears throat> we have a local game donation from your name here and it's twenty dollars going towards mirrored choice uh, of file name of wind waker file name No, right after this, there's technically one more little area. The timing doesn't take my stop until after I get through that earlier. So yeah, basically everything I did through the entire level is going in reverse. So that's why you had things like me just flying up where that ladder was, because I originally I fell. It also uh, basically reveals the fact that uh, you thought that Tim might have been pr the protagonist throughout this entire game. He's actually not the protagonist. <laughs> he's, uh, 
he's more of an antagonist in a way. But it actually is more revealed if you actually read the story of the game, which we didn't do. But yeah, he wasn't trying to save the princess at all. He was basically... The princess was running away from him the entire time. But yeah, so now time is back to normal. Well, that was a bummer. <laughs> yeah, so then you have this little epilogue, which technically is a little more in the story realm of the game. Yeah, this, that's basically just all the epilogue is, it's just, this, just there for story purposes. But unfortunately, the way the game does its timing is that the epilogue is actually part of the game's timing. What would that switch have done? Because he wants you to read it. Yeah, it probably does want me to read it. I forget, what would that switch uh, Timing will end once I go through the door, so time. 40-34. Here it takes. Not bad. Yeah, the only, the only reason that the real time, the in-game time is not the same as real time is just because of the puzzle solving is not included in, in real, the real, um, in-game timer. So, yeah, basically those puzzles add about an extra three and a half minutes, it looks like. What's the SDA record again? The SDA record's like about a little under 28 minutes. So, yeah. It's really impressive. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. So, up next we have... Uh,